In question one of this series, I'll show you how to determine if vectors form a basis. So in question number one in particular, we'll look at vectors, and in question two, we'll look at matrices. The question reads, determine whether the vectors shown here with these x, y, and z components form a basis in 3D space. To form a basis, two conditions need to be met. One, we have to prove that these vectors span, and we also have to prove that they're linearly independent. If we can prove both, then they form a basis. Let's start by proving that they span. Now to prove that these vectors span, add them up, multiply them by a scalar, and set that equal to a, another vector which has the components a, b, and c. If I can find a number that represents the scalars, then it spans. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start by multiplying each of these vectors by a scalar. I'll represent each scalar by the letter k. So I have k sub 1 times 1, negative 3, and 2, plus k sub 2 times this vector, negative 4, negative 1, and 0, plus k sub 3 times our last vector, negative 1, 2, and 1. And we'll let this equal to another vector which has the components a, b, and c. Next, I'll create equations out of this. You should end up with three equations because there are three components. The first equation will relate the x, the second will relate the y, and the third will relate the z. So the first equation will be k sub 1 times 1, k sub 2 times negative 4, so negative 4, k sub 2, k sub 3 times negative 1, so negative 1, k sub 3 is equal to a. We'll do this two more times. You should end up with negative 3, k1, minus k2, plus 2 times k2 is equal to b. And lastly, 2 times k sub 1 plus 0 plus k sub 3 is equal to c. I'll make a matrix out of these equations. And the reason why is because you can then solve for these scalar components with whatever method that you like. But because we end up with an n by n matrix, a square matrix, we can actually find the determinant. And it turns out that if the determinant is not equal to zero, so you get something other than zero, that means you will end up with solutions for this matrix, and so it spans. First, I'll create the matrix. Notice what I have here. This part in specific, we'll call this part A, and it's an n by n matrix, it's a square matrix. By finding the determinant of this, using whatever method that you like, either cofactor expansion or the trick method that you've been taught, if it comes out a number other than zero, as explained, then you have solutions. We don't need to find the solutions, we just need to prove that it has solutions. So by finding the determinant of A, you should end up with, for this specific matrix, 31. That does not equal to zero, so A is invertible and it has solutions. And if it has solutions, then it spans. So that's our first proof. The second thing that we have to prove, if you want to know if it forms a basis, is if it's linearly independent. In one of our previous videos, we learned that to find out if a set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent, you can write one as a sum of the other vectors. So technically what we're supposed to do is redo this whole process except for a, b, and c, we set them equal to zero, a zero vector. And just like what we did here, find the solution for k sub one through sub three, except we didn't do that here, we used a determinant to tell us if there will be solutions. But we can use the same idea. Remember what we learned in one of our previous videos. We learned that if the determinant is not equal to zero, as in our case here, for an n by n matrix, it is said to be an invertible matrix. And according to the equivalence theorem, if a matrix is invertible, then the homogeneous system only has trivial solutions. That means k sub 1 through sub 3 equal to zero. If that's the case, then it's linearly independent. So just from that proof alone, this will be linearly independent. And because it's both linearly independent and we've proven that it spans, then it forms a basis. That's the answer to question number one. If you'd like to see this repeated for a matrix instead of vectors, make sure you watch question two of this series and we'll see you soon.